we are recording the uh, newest assignment for computer animation and what we're going to get into today is actually dropping in an element of animation that we haven't used much yet and that is sound. As you can hear uh, from this example animation we're making a simple car kind of run in and then rush out of the scene and drop in a couple sounds, add a couple motion tweens and that is about that. So um, getting started on a new animation here, I'll go ahead and start anew. Um, what we actually want to do very first is I want to show you where we're going to actually be using the resource we're going to use for our sounds and that is called freesound.org. Um, so if you go to your browser and type in freesound.org, either find it from Google or find it just in your browser. Um, and what we're going to do is we are going to register um, I need everybody to register their own name. Um, I also have one that just in case somebody forgets password or something like that, they can always use it, but um, it'd be easiest if everyone had their own. It's very simple to register. Um, you make up a username, um, you put your first and last name and your email in twice, and make up a password. So password should be something you know simple that you can remember. Maybe something like animation 2016. Um, something like that um, where it's you know specific to our class something easy to remember when you come into class what your uh, sound effect password would be um, so once you register um, you want to go ahead and log, log in I've already saved my password here um, we're gonna look for two specific sounds so we want the car to come to a stop and we want the car to start up and go again um, so what we're gonna do is actually download uh, those two sounds right now so um, first one we're going to look for is a car braking. So we want a car braking sound. Um, and so here we have a few that come up and you can play previews of them. I believe this is the one we're looking for, this first one. And so, yep, that sounds good. So that is a car braking sound. Um, we click on the link right here and uh, you should see this yellow link that says download right here. And so we'll go ahead, click download. And um, now that file should appear in my downloads folder when I go to look for it. Um, the other sound we need is a car taking off. So why don't we type in a car uh, burnout and let's see what we find. Okay, so we have a few things here. Um, I think that the one that I had actually used in mine was this drag car burnout right here. Um, it's a longer animation. Um, I think this was the one we went with. Yeah, I think just turn up my sound a little bit. No, no, maybe not. Maybe that is not the one I was looking for. Maybe that one is a little bit better. I believe I had issues with that one though. I think there's a reason why I skipped over that one. Um, this, I believe, is the one I ended up going with. So we're looking for drag racer burnouts, and it's really long as you can tell, but I'm also going to show you how we can uh, clip down this animation, or this uh, sound wave actually, um, in Flash. So I went ahead and clicked download. So both of these are downloading. Um, this should just take a little under a minute here. So while that's doing that, I will go back to Flash and I will start my animation process. So um, first thing we're going to need is a car. So I'll start by naming our first layer uh, car. Um, I'll go back to Google Chrome and I'll go back to my other search. I had already look, been looking for some hot rod images that I could use. Um, the simpler the background, the better. Okay, so I'm taking this image with a white background. It's going to be very easy to kind of separate the car from the background for the animation purposes. All right, so we're going to go ahead and copy this image. I'm going to go back to Flash, and I'm going to paste this image down on my stage. Wait for it. Wait for it, and there it is. So what we are going to do with this image is we're going to use a feature of Flash called a bitmap trace and what that bitmap trace is going to do is it is going to convert uh, this image that we copied off of the web and it's going to convert it into flash graphics um, and the way we're going to do that is go to our modify menu at the top of our screen go down to bitmap and we're going to choose trace bitmap um, now i think for this particular image i used 50 on my other car that should work minimum area of eight is good normal and normal here should be okay. Um, I have a preview option here 
and I'm not positive that you have the same, but this looks pretty good. It looks like it simplified the shapes. Um, it's hard to even tell too much that it changed it much, but when we say OK, um, as you can see, it's all uh, a flash type graphic. So what I can do is actually click and it selected the entire area, this white area on the outside. Um, it doesn't look like it went into the car or anything too much. And when I press delete, um, that should leave me with almost just the car. It looks like there's a little bit of gray tone on the front. So I'll zoom in really close and click off to the side and then click on these two gray tones and delete them. So if I scroll by and look at this, you can see that it's actually converted this image into sort of like a paintbrush type approach. Um, I'll leave a little bit of this shadow below. I think I might take out some of it so it's not so big. Um, but I think a little bit of shadow is kind of a nice touch for this. So if you do have a little bit, um, that's okay. I think I'm going to take out this bit right here. And I think work with this. Um, so what I want to do is uh, convert this car into a graphic. So I can either click on this first keyframe here, uh, have everything selected. We'll press F8 and I'm going to convert this car into a symbol. So I'll just call it car. And I want to start by kind of moving it off to the side of my stage because it will start off on the side. And what we're going to do now is actually create kind of a background gradient. So we'll create a new layer. We'll call this layer background. And press enter. And we want to move the background down below the car. Obviously, we want to have that behind it. And we're going to create kind of a square area here to put a fill. Um, as you can see, the color I have right now is chosen is white. So we're not seeing anything until I go ahead and select linear gradient and actually take this and I will fill it with that linear gradient. Okay, uh, my gradient already happens to kind of be preset because I had just been doing this. Um, you, however, will probably not have the benefit of that. So probably what you're looking at when you go to start with that gradient is uh, like a black and white gradient solid. Okay, so what we want to do first is actually take our uh, gradient transform or our, um, our fill transform tool and we want to take this gradient and rotate it. So we're going to rotate it so it's vertical, uh, straight up and down, and then we're going to make a couple changes to it. Um, what we're going to do is have this gradient actually start with more of a gray tone. So we'll bring this to kind of the middle of the road. And then we're going to add two swatches right to the middle. Okay, one of these we want to be white. And then the one, another one right next to it. And this one is going to be more of a dark gray color. All right, and what we're hoping to have appear uh, is that there's kind of like a background space here. And this is kind of the line for the surface that we're at. Um, so we want to move these really close together so that... Um, this line appears to be like a solid edge. So these are really close to each other, like practically on top of each other. Um, and that seems to work for me. Uh, zoom in here a little bit. Um, and what I'm going to do is go down um, some frames in my animation and just kind of add some blank frames. So I'm going to go down to about 60. I'm going to shift and click these two layers and then press F5 so that these, my car and my background, hang around for a while. Okay, so what I want to do next actually is move my car onto the stage. So I want to go maybe, let's say, 15 frames in. I will add an F6 keyframe, um, and then I want to move this car onto the stage. So I'm just going to move it straight over and have it stop somewhere around close to the middle. And then I'm going to go ahead of my animation and maybe to the 35th keyframe or so and add another uh, keyframe there and then maybe down around the 45th or so. Um, that's where I'm going to have the car actually move off the stage. So it's going to take off and uh, go off stage right. Okay, so what I just need to do now is add some motion tweens. So I'll create a motion tween here so that my car pulls in. Um, and then I'll add a second motion tween here so the car then pulls out. 
Um, and now all that's left for this part is to add in some sounds. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna add another layer and this is gonna be for sound. So this first sound we want to be uh, the sound uh, for go. So we'll call this layer sound go. We'll create another new layer and we'll call this sound uh, stop. Okay, um, so on this layer sound stop is where we're going to place, right on this keyframe is where we're gonna place that sound. Um, the way we do that is we go to file and import. And we'll actually import to the library. Um, and if your library is not actually open over here, we'll have to open that too, um, which is something else that we can talk about. So what I need to grab is I need to grab both of these um, will it let me do two? It will let me do two. So you can take both of those animations um, or sound effects, like I said, from your downloads folder, right? So what you will find is you will see, you'll look for student. You should have a student menu in your uh, window here. You'll go to downloads and then in there you should have a couple of dot wave forms, so, or files. Dot WAV should be at the end. And, um, and I know that these two, I believe, are the ones that I was going for, so I'll import them to my library. And where you can see those pop up is right down in the bottom right hand corner here. And like I said, if you don't for some reason have your library window open, you go to window and we will go down to uh, library. So it should be somewhere around the middle of your window bar and that should bring up uh, your library. So what we want here is, and we can preview the sound here, Okay, so that is our burnout, and then here we can preview this sound, and that is our stopping. So this is the sound that we actually want um, on that, on this particular keyframe. So I'm literally just going to click this sound off over here, and I'm just going to drag it to my stage anywhere. And what you'll see now is on this sound stop layer, we now have the sound effect uh, in this wave form. So if I preview this animation, you now have it uh, nicely timed out. I happen to know how long the sound would last, and so that actually pretty much works right there with the 15 frames and then stopping on that 15th. Okay, so now on the Go animation uh, layer, we will create another keyframe. So I'll press F6 right here to line up with the going of this car. And again, we're gonna take the pulling out um, or the burnout uh, sound and we'll just click drag it to the stage and you'll see it pops in here now We're gonna have an issue here at the end I know that it looks like our animation stops, but what happens with a flash sound uh, Sometimes unless we edit this is it's gonna just keep playing this sound continually And it's gonna overlap into the beginning of our animation and make it very confusing So if we just preview this, I'll show you what I mean So the car took off, but now you can hear that that sound was too long. So now it's running continually, and it's hard to hear much going on. It's very confusing because the car is still going. Okay, so let's stop that. Phew. Um, so what we want to do is actually edit this sound um, so that it stops at the 60th frame. So it cuts off. So we want to double click on this sound layer. So if you just click anywhere in here twice so that it highlights and the middle line turns yellow, we'll go down to our properties bar and find this edit button right here. Now what we want to do in this edit window is you'll see two different waves. Um, this is because our sound is in stereo. And so stereo sound is going to have a left uh, wave and a right wave. Um, and actually what will make this easier to do is if we click on frames, the frames option, so that we can see where the 60th frame is. Okay, so I'm gonna scroll through here. I need to find where it says 60. So there we go, right here. And that's where I want my sound to stop. So what I'm gonna do is I'm going to click right on this line and what you'll see is on this top line now you'll have a line also that corresponds to it uh, or a square that corresponds to it right below in the bottom waveform but it doesn't move uh, vertically so what we're gonna have to do is do the vertical movement in both I'm gonna click a second time so we have another um, spot here and what this is is the volume so essentially we're gonna take the volume and turn it off 
right here. So this is going to play to the 60th frame, and then the sound is going to shut off. And we need to do that same thing to this bottom uh, layer down here. Um, it kind of moved my second square there on top of the other one, so it's hard to see it, but it was still there. And I'm going to take this and do the same thing on the other wavelength. So now our sound, this sound effect should stop at the 60th frame. So if I go ahead and preview, preview this animation again, we have the car coming in breaking, and then pulling out and then it stops, okay? And we can make that fade out a little more. We can talk about other ways to uh, continue to edit sound, but that's all for today. And so uh, I hope you have fun and success in completing this uh, quick animation lesson.